Ah, Pooch! I love hanging out with you guys. You really know how to get the party started. But you know, folks are starting to talk. What folks, Tony? Yeah, what folks? Uh, and are they talking about my lustrous coat? Oh, uh, look at me! I just had a bath this morning. <laughs> nice, huh? Very nice, Muggs. Who washed you? I ran down to Suds and Buds and used one of Bernie's holiday gift certificates. They're not bad. The Shih Tzu in there works wonders on matted fur, <laughs> let me tell you. I can see that. Don't get off topic, Tony. You said folks are talking. What are they talking about? I can't hear myself over this ruckus. Allow me, Tony. Wow, nice. You gotta teach me that sometime. These dogs are animals. Don't I know it. Okay, come on, Tony. Gossip. Yeah! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shh! They'll start up again. Oh, right. Uh, sorry. There's been lots of noise complaints lately. With all the animals and people getting real upset about all the racket we make here in Dogtown. If, what people? And what animals? Who would possibly be bothered by our happy calls? That's just the thing, Larry. Other folks don't see it as happy. They see it as a bunch of annoying dogs who won't shut up. Well, bah. Tell them to come say it directly to our muzzles. Funny you say that, Muggs. I spotted a letter on Bernie's desk the other day. A letter? Did you eat it? Oh, well, what did it taste like? Was it on that fancy scented paper? Was it folded by somebody with bacon fingers? Mm -hmm. Bacon. No, no, nothing like that. It was from some school. It had a weird name. Weird like Bark Busters? Oh, I'd never go there. Train the dog right out of you. That place. No, it was foreign sounding. Like, German? German bratwurst? Mm, I think maybe French. Oh, a French fries. <laughs> French, huh? Uh, <laughs> I'm not worried about it then. The French love dogs. You ever see how many purse poodles those ladies carry around over there? Lots. And that's not even counting the ones on leashes. I bet that school heard how awesome we are here in Dogtown and sent an enrollment invitation letter. Yeah, uh, maybe they want to recruit for our best and brightest. Oh. oh. Or maybe they want to shut us down. Shut us down? Hush your mouth. How can one little school shut down a town all the way overseas? I don't know how little they are, Larry. They sounded like kind of a big deal. Well, they can just come and visit and see Dogtown for themselves. Have a biscuit on us and see firsthand how happy we are. Mmm, um, biscuits. Listen, whatever it is they want, I think it'd be a good idea to calm down a little bit and not draw so much attention to ourselves. I saw a stack of noise complaints a poor high from the neighboring towns. Hmm, that sounds like a lot of noise complaints. Right. So I think if we just pipe down and stop being so excitable all the time... Squirrel! Oh! Oh! Goodness, Pierre, listen to all that noise. It's an abomination. Incroyable. Je n'ai jamais entendu des chiens aussi terribles dans ma vie. In the English, Monsieur Coulotte, remember, these are dogs. They can barely comprehend the basic English vocabulary of stay, sit, fetch, and dinner is ready. Ah, how can I forget? Mademoiselle Hissifi. It's easy to forget that such creatures as moths exist. Ah, oh, but they do. Alas, they do. It is so, Lucille. It is so. Ah. Well, shall we go in and locate who's in charge? I suppose. I was hoping we'd be met by a gatekeeper or guards or a butler or something. I never want to endure a situation like we had on the English moors ever again. I agree. Those wild hounds chased you for hours. Beasts! Thank heavens I found that tree to climb on, and you were able to find and rescue me. I'll never leave mon ami Lucille in distress. Oh, Pierre, 
Whatever did I do to deserve such a loyal manservant? Manservant? Moi? Whatever do you mean? I thought we were equals. Equal? To a cat? Oh, yeah, I'm sure, of course, we're equals. Come, let's find whoever's in charge of the zoo and resolve this ridiculous situation. Of course, at once. Excusez-moi. Hey, are you trying to clear a hairball or what? Greetings. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Mr. Pierre Coulotte, and this is my associate, Ms. Lucille Hissifit. Who might we be speaking with? How yeah, much? Merle Mutz. Well, um, uh, Mr. Mutz, we've come all the way from the prestigious French dog training school. Ecole du Chien? I'm sure you've heard of it, yes? I uh, nope. Oh, well, at any rate, here we are. Good for you. You want a treat or something? Um, no. We don't want a treat. We'd like to speak with whomever's in charge of your delightful town. About as delightful as a case of mange. Huh? What was that? Oh, nothing. Just working on that hairball. <laughs> Well, don't hack it up near me. I ain't cleaning up after no cat. Mr. Mutz, might you point us in the direction of your town's alpha? The town's alpha? Yeah, you're looking at him, pal. At least I was uh, three years ago. If I still was in my prime, I'd take a bite out of that silly little cap you got there. Make it my lunchtime toy. Oh, my. Well then, Mr. Mutz, I'm certainly glad time has passed. Who might the current alpha be? I guess it'd be Bernie Barf. But don't tell him you heard that from me. We have a nice working relationship. He leaves me alone, and I do whatever I want. We make sure we don't pee over each other's markings. <laughs> oh, just the way I like it. I imagine there are quite a few dogs who do whatever they want here. Isn't that right, Merle? I ain't sure I like your tone, cat. Lucille. Remember the hounds. I've got this under control, Pierre. Tell us, Mr. Mutz, where might we locate this Bernie Barf? Got me. He could be napping for all I know. Why? You here to teach him some new tricks? You might say that. Monsieur, si vous pouvez nous montrer où il reste nous serons en route. Pierre, in English. Huh? Uh, what's that garbledy gook you're talking? I apologize, Mr. Mutz. We're French, you know. Yeah, I figured that. The only thing that bothers me more than a cat is a Frenchman. Well, I never. And you never will if you don't watch it, kitty. Please, Mr. Merle. We don't mean to disturb you. We come as friends. Where might we look for this, Bernie? The park's where all the action goes down. The park. Wonderful. But you better take treats if you go. A couple of strangers strolling in our park empty-handed might have a rough time. Thanks for the tip, kind sir. Don't sweat it, Frenchie. Oh, we never sweat, Mr. Mutz. We're refined animals. Yeah, good for you. Excuse me, sirs. Might we have a word with you? Sure. Uh, what's up? We're fine, thank you. Are either of you named Bernie by chance? Bernie? No, I I'm Larry. Larry Slobberstick, uh, at your service. And they call me Muggs. Uh, Bucephalus Muggs is my full name. <laughs> it's an honor to meet you, boys. Allow me to introduce us. I am Mr. Pierre Coulotte, and this is my... Supervisor. Supervisor? Mademoiselle Lucille Isifit. Hello! Hello. Say, it takes some chutzpah for a cat to show up in Dogtown. Ha! I can take care of myself, kind dogs. Pierre and I are from the prestigious French dog training school, École du Chien. We've traveled the world over, bringing etiquette and manner to dogs, mutts, and owls everywhere. I have yet to meet a dog that can get the better of me. Meow. Especially if there are trees around you can hide in. What did you say? <coughs> uh, nothing. Hey! École du Chien! That's the school Tony was telling us about, Larry. That's one that sent the letter. Oh. So, you guys
guys can read? Well, uh, kinda. I personally can't read every word I see, uh, uh, but I get the gist of stuff. Especially when it's read out loud. But Tony is a smart doggy. He can read. Some. Ha. Sounds like some of you are already ahead of the game. Game? Oh, I love playing games. What do you want to play? Fetch? What he's trying to say is we've already contacted you here at Dogtown. Encouraging you. To attend a good dog school where you would get trained in dog manners and etiquette. Oui. You should attend our Ecole du Chien in Sunkist Hills of the south of France. Wow! See? I told you they were looking to recruit. Uh, me in France. <laughs> Sipping tea. Eating croissants. <laughs> croissants. Wow, that sounds delicious and swanky. But with all due respect, Miss Hissy Fit, Mr. Coolot, we love it here in Dogtown. Yeah, we do. Running and playing and barking it up. <laughs> Though we don't have any croissants. Yeah, there's no place like Dogtown in the whole wide world. That goes without saying, Larry. We've been here only a few minutes, and this town already seems very, hmm, unique. But you know, that's not always a good thing. No? Uh, how can it not be a good thing when we have so much doggone fun all the time? Well, you guys having so much fun all the time sometimes means those around you aren't having any fun at all. It does? Indeed, Morgs. It does. Your town hall has received so many noise complaints from neighboring communities recently that we were called in to assess the situation and devise a plan to resolve it. What does that mean exactly? It means we've been called here by your neighbors to take action and bring a stop to the uncontrollable barking and howling around Dogtown. Like we're hearing right now. I can't hear myself sink. Might either of you say something to silence them? I don't know. We egg each other on quite a bit, but we don't really hush one another much. Well, see there. This is something to work on. Why don't you talk to them? Try something. Um, okay. Hey, you guys, zip it! Hey, dogs! It's me, Larry! We're trying to talk over here! <laughs> Guess not. Uh, welcome to Dogtown, guys. Oh, boys, this is going to be harder than I thought. <sighs> Where would we find the dog named Bellmy? Hello? Excuse me? Excuse me? Oh, <coughs> uh, yes? Are you Bernie? Bernie Barf, how can I help you? Uh, unless this is about dogs playing in the cornfields. I don't know nothing about that. No, it's not about that. Although I'm sure it'll come up at some point. I'm Monsieur Pierre Coulot. And I'm Mademoiselle Lucille Isifit. And we're from the prestigious French dog training school, Ecole du Chien. Oh, right! I got your letter! You did? Splendid! What did you think? About what? About our plan. Plan? Oh, what plan? The plan detailed in the letter, Mr. Barf. Please call me Bernie. We're, we're casual here in Dogtown. Yes, we could tell. Bernie, did you happen to read our letter? Read it? <laughs> no, I can't read. I mean, uh, I know some words and stuff and stringing them together. <laughs> Forget about it. I'm a dog. We eat letters. And did you eat our letter? Yep, it was yummy. Uh, which one of you eats the Dijon mustard? We both do. Mmm, mmm. You didn't bring any of that along, did you? I'm afraid not. Greg. Allow me to summarize things for you, Bernie. We're here because your neighboring communities have complained about the round-the-clock noise in Dogtown. Noise? Well, we don't make noise here. What of the nuisance we just heard? It took us a moment just to get your attention amid all the hubbub. Well, sure, we bark and howl. <laughs> We're dogs! 
Bernie, therein lies the crux of the problem. You dogs are too loud and far too ill-behaved to police yourselves. Police? Who called the police? Nobody yet. Instead, they called us. You see, your neighbors just want to get along and coexist in peace. Which is why we are here. We'd like to help you find a way to calm the hyperactivity in Dogtown. Especially that obnoxiously loud yellow mutt we met earlier. My poor ears are still ringing. Yes, we must make sure that you and all of your dogs continue to live free and comfortably, happily ever after. And that can only happen if you guys stop barking so much. Hmm, well, exactly what'll happen if we don't quiet down around here? There's a chance your neighbors will call an animal control officer. And animal control doesn't talk to you the way we do. They'll come in trucks and break up your town, taking everyone to the local dog pound. Oh, the pound? Oh, no. We, we dogs don't like the pound. Nobody does, Monsieur Barf. The dog pound is a sad and lonesome place. You don't want to end up there, do you? Oh, no, we don't. I'll talk to my dogs right away. Can you quiet them first? Sure. Ah, oh, that's better. Now I can hear myself sink. Ah, <sighs> little tiny kitty sorts of fluffy white balls of yarn rolling down a hill of sardine-flavored kibble. <coughs> Meow! Get your dogs to zip it, Monsieur Barf, or off to the pound you all go. Comprendre? What? Do you understand? Oh, yes. Yes, I do, Miss Hissy Fit. Meow. Good. Hey, Bernie. I need your attention, both of you. Uh oh. Are we in the doghouse? No. Uh, it's more serious than that. What'd we do? Oh, no. Is this about the cornfield thing? Shh. No, Muggs, it's not about the cornfield. Thank dog. <laughs> it's about the non-stop barking around here. Oh, yeah? Is someone giving you problems, Burn? Point them out. We'll set them straight. I'm looking at them. They're behind us, aren't they? Muggs, he's talking about us. Us? What? What? Look, guys, I need you two to zip it. Zip what, Burn? Your muzzles. Especially you, Lair. Me? Yes, you're the loudest and barkiest dog in this town. You get everybody railed up and barking their heads off around here the moment you start your howling. Oh, yeah. I know. It's just... Uh, I got this issue, Burn. Separation anxiety, you know? Yeah, Larry's got issues, Burn. I get antsy when I don't have my fire hydrant around, or or my safety blanket, or my, my chew stick, or my tennis ball, or... Uh, Larry, I sympathize with this whole thing. I, I really do. I, too, was a young dog once. Full of energy and strength, impulses and questions, confusion and anxiety. You were? Sounds like you need a shrink, Bernie. You know, in my youthful years, I just couldn't figure it all out. I had such bad separation anxiety. If my owner left the room to get a snack, I'd totally freak out. Mmm, the snacks. Oh, just like me and my tennis ball. Oh, I, I mean shaking, growling, barking, howling, whimpering, the whole bit. Things got so bad, I even ignored my dog bed and insisted on sleeping in the master bedroom. Uh, and they let me. Whoa. Yeah. Then if someone got up and left me alone even for a minute, well, I'd wet the bed. No way! Indeed. It got to the point where I'd have to go everywhere with my owner, because if she'd leave me uncrated at home, I'd destroy the furniture. I was what you'd call a bad dog. I had no idea, Bernie. Yeah, well, neither did I. That's how it got to the point that it did. Nobody taught me that what I was doing was so annoying. I just thought it was what you had to do to bond with your person. How did you overcome it, Bernie? I didn't. 
Uh, my owner gave me away, and I grew up in a kennel with 20 other yapping dogs who made a non-stop racket for 10 years. Oh, burn. That's terrible. Well, not really. It actually helped me quite a bit. It did? Uh, how so? Well, I, I got so sick of listening to those hollering kennel dogs, I escaped. Get out. That's right, I did. For two years, I practiced vertical jumping in the yard. Hoi, hoi. The staff thought I was just doing tricks for treats, so they'd clap, uh, toss me snacks, and let me do my thing. One night, I hopped a low fence and bailed. I never saw that place again. Wow. Wow. <laughs> now, uh, I'm here talking to you two as my two most annoying and loudest dogs in Dogtown. Especially you, Larry. Oh, boy. You got some lungs on you, boy. I think that's on account of my great-grandma. She's a bloodhound, you know. Do you think Bernie will be able to talk any sense into these dogs? Judging by the ones we've met, I'm not getting my hopes up. But anything's possible. <laughs> or not. So, after you escaped the kennel, Bernie, where'd you go? Oh, everywhere, anywhere, nowhere. I wandered the land, became one with my spirit, got in touch with my inner wolf. How wild! What was it like being so free, Bernie? Yeah? How was it? Uh, it sucked. Oh. Oh. It was cold and dangerous. I was hungry and thirsty, eating out of trash bins and drinking from rain puddles. <laughs> It made me realize being a kept pet wasn't so bad after all. And that even if your owner leaves the room, they'll come right back and feed you or play with you or show you love. <laughs> Heck, even if they didn't, you still had a place in the home and everything was going to be okay. Aww. I sure wish somebody had explained that to little old Bernie the puppy. <laughs> Would have spared big Bernie Barf some hard times. Oh, but hey, everything I've been through has made me the dog that I am today. Yeah! That's the spirit burn. You show him, big guy. That's just it, guys. I haven't been showing him. I've been lost in my own thoughts, resting on my laurels, getting complacent here. Having a place like Dogtown to call home is a tremendous blessing, but it's an even greater responsibility. I've been shirking that responsibility for a long time. And now you dogs are out of control. We don't want to cause any problems, Bernie. Tell us what we're doing wrong and we'll change it. Well, that's nice of you boys, but you ever heard that saying? If you have to ask, you'll never know? No. Well, there's a saying, if you have to ask, you'll never know. And, well, you, you just asked. Great. You're sending us to the kennel, aren't you? No. Goodness, Mugs. Do you think I'm heartless? You guys are my hound brothers. Really? Ooh, we can stay? Guys, listen. Uh, Dogtown is your home. Now and forever. We don't turn our tails on our own kind, no matter what. Don't ever doubt that. <laughs> I know you're very comfortable here. Oh, well, we all are. However, on account of our behavior lately, Folks have been complaining, and now we're in trouble. The French cat? Uh, the French human? I've made reservations at the Moping Hound Inn for only two nights. I'm hoping we get this alabaloo sorted out quickly, Pierre. This noise is insufferable. <laughs> My eardrums are exploding, Mademoiselle Hissifit. My eyes are tearing. Let's go get breakfast. I need a bowl of warm milk to get myself together. Rapidement! They're here to teach us how to behave like good dogs, which means... Uh, Not barking so much? That's right, and we best listen or... Or... Or possibly get a visit from Animal Control. Animal Control? Let me get this straight, Bernie. If the dogs who call Dogtown home don't pipe down and stop barking and carrying on at all hours, we might be in trouble with Animal Control? Yes, Larry, I'm afraid that's the situation we're in. <laughs> what? Nobody threatens Dogtown. We'll fight. Hold on, Muggs. It isn't so simple. 
The world views hostile dogs very harshly. Not to mention a town full of them. Resistant civil calls for peace and calm is the worst thing we could do. Yeah, it could spell the end of Dogtown. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, how do you spell that? I know you guys enjoy the way things are, but think about what I said. Well, the path I took in my own life. Uh, and consider doing the same. You mean getting locked up in a kennel? No. Starving on the streets? Pay attention, Muggs. Bernie's asking us to learn some neighborly manners. Right, Bernie? Exactly. Good dog. <laughs> Who's a good dog? <laughs> I, I, I'm a good dog. <laughs> oh, we're doomed. Let us go talk it over, Burn. We'll do the right thing. Oh, you two are good boys. <laughs> Who's a good boy? <laughs> I'm a good boy. <laughs> Guys, what did we just talk about? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, boss. Good. Now go get him. What do you think? Uh, how do we stop these barking urges we got, Lair? Should we do what Bernie did and uh, hit the road? I'm not sure, Muggs. Didn't sound like a bed of roses with bacon grease poured on it. Especially that stin at the kennel. A road trip sure sounds fun, though. It could get unfun in a hurry, though, if we don't play it just right. Play? Yeah, I'll play. You want to play now? <laughs> Shh! Calm down, Muggs. We shouldn't be drawing attention to ourselves, especially now. See? Oh, listen to what you've done. I'm sorry, Larry. Uh, I can't help it. I'm a slave to my passions. That's what worries me. How else can we break our bad habits if we don't separate ourselves from this place and clear our heads? Oh, like I said before, treats always work for me. Yeah, only there won't be any treats for us, or comfy beds, or friends to turn to, or maybe even shelter and safety. Your version of a road trip sure does stink, Larry. We have to prepare for the worst, Muggs. And hey, if it's not that bad, at least we'll be ready. Then we'll probably have a better time than we expected. Oh, I like me a good time. We sure had some good times here in Dogtown, eh, buddy? Sure have. This is the tail waggiest town there ever was. Remember over there when old George peed on that down power line? Ha! Huh, he got the shock of his life. Sure did. And over there, when Big Toby got his snout stuck in that peanut butter jar? <laughs> <laughs> it took half the day just to pull him loose. We really had a blast here. <laughs> Made memories to last a lifetime. I know every brick in this town like the back of my paw. Heck, <laughs> I've whizzed on every brick in this town. <laughs> and on the back of your paw. Thanks for that visual, Muggs. No prob. Hey, Bernie, my dear. How's the day treating ya? Oh, Mrs. Dottie. Just having some trouble with the neighbors. Oh, yeah? Our pups are chasing the human bus again. Oh, it's the barking this time. <laughs> ah, dogs will be dogs, dear. Well, I sure do hope two of our loudest can stop inciting such a ruckus for the good of all of Dogtown. It would be a really bad idea to let animal control come to Dogtown. The worst. We've been off their radar here ever since this place started. Once they find it, oh, they'll never stop coming. You think? I know. Anytime a dog gets lost, they'll come looking for it here. Anytime a dog gets sick, they'll come testing and vaccinating us. Anytime a dog does poorly in training, they'll call us feral. And we'll get the blame. I, uh, I never thought of it like that. Animal control will use any excuse to pick up one of us. Until the time comes when they pick up all of us. 
And that's not even accounting for the developers and the companies who'll want this land to set up shop. Developers? <laughs> companies? Bernie would never corporatize Dogtown, Larry. You're right. He wouldn't. But they would. Just as soon as they found out about it. Stray bucks, walnuts. Ugh. Imagine that. We can't let them. Then we know what we have to do. We'll leave first thing in the morning. Take the high road and find our inner good dog. <sighs> it's time to say goodbye to Dogtown. Uh, oh, no! Uh, that's so sad. Uh, uh, that makes me want to... <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Merle. Top of the morning to you boys. You're up early. We're heading out. Oh, yeah? Going pigeon chasing? Not exactly. Uh, perspective chasing's more like it. Road's a tricky place to gain perspective. Usually it's the other way around. Remember what happened to Canner? How could we forget? Canner's a cautionary tale for all of Dogtown. He always did love licking frozen electrical poles, though. <laughs> that he did. Does he have any of his teeth left? Nah, he can only lick the gravy out of the can. What you boys looking for out there in the main streets, anyway? Uh, Dogtown's in trouble, Merle. If we don't change our ways, we could find ourselves impounded. Uh, or worse. We're hitting the road to try and break some of our bad habits. Then we come back home and teach the others. Noble, oh, what if it doesn't work? We could lose everything. Whew, I love high stakes. Take me back to my days on the riverboats. You were on the riverboats? I grew up on them. High adventure mugs. Wow, how'd you end up here with us? Our boat hit a rock and sank. We were the only ones on the river that day. So no one answered the old SOS. Whoa. Whoa's right. I paddled to shore and started walking, looking like a wet mop. Incredible. Lucky for me, it was just down the river from here. My last shot of old riverboat luck, I guess. Bernie saw me walking and called me over to share some kibble. Said he just marked his territory and was calling it dog town <laughs> the rest is history oh gone the road can be lucky or cursed boys keep your eyes open and your ears perked meet it head on no other way to do it thanks merle don't mention it uh, uh, to anybody i have a crabby reputation to protect besides if the other dogs hear i'm out here giving out advice they'll never leave me alone if i ever find myself answering questions about coat grooming and nail clipping i'm heading back to the river you got me gotcha thanks for being a friend merle yeah, we'll see you soon ha, if i had a bone every time i heard that one see you around boys don't do anything i'd do don't you mean uh don't do anything i wouldn't do nope don't do anything i would do <laughs> i'm all out of luck trust me Ask yourselves what the opposite of Merle's decision would be, and then do that. Will do, Merle. Oh, and don't chase any cars. General rule? It's a bad idea. Your muzzle to our ears. Well, come on, Mugs. The day's a-wasting. Woo-hoo! <laughs> World, here we come! It's not too much farther now. Just up around the next bend. What are we doing here, Mugs? Going back to the place of my youth eh, might help me figure out where I turned bad. You're a junkyard dog? Yup, me and my three brothers. You have brothers? You never told me you had brothers, Mugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, jugs, chugs, and bugs. Um, bugs? Yeah, he had some case of fleas, well, let me tell you. Junkyard dogs can be mean. Nah, uh, not my guys. Let's go meet the locals. I sure hope you're right. Hey, wait up. Whoa. Oh, what kind of dog are you? Dog? Good 
goodness, no. I'm a giraffe. A giraffe? What happened to Marcus, the Rottweiler who lived here? I don't know. I'm here now. I work for the satellite company. You? A technician? No, but I help reception on account of my height. My horns are like antennas. I get paid pretty good for a giraffe. Cool! Uh, we didn't have giraffes when I lived here. You lived here? Yep, a long time ago. Well, I'm glad it was before my time. You dogs are noisy creatures. Hey, not all of us. Some of us are good boys. And which boys are you? Well, uh... Exactly. Noisy, loud, and obnoxious. Come on, Larry. She doesn't like us. I like peace and quiet. That means no dogs. But uh, we're not noisy, loud, and obnoxious. Uh, right, Larry? We won't be after we find our inner good dog mugs. Let's go. Our journey's not over. So you guys aren't moving in? Thank goodness. Who lives here, Muggs? Chaps the St. Bernard. He taught the junkyard pups how to bury bones. Don't look like nobody's at home, though. This place looks like a dump. Ah, uh, who are you two to say my place looks like a dump? Huh? Who's there? Pete Sniffs is my name. And who might you mutts be? Uh, I'm Larry Slobberstick. And I'm Bucephalus Muggs. Bucephalus Muggs? Hey, did you used to live here? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, I've heard of you. Your name's still scratched into the wood down at the warehouse. Really? Mm-hmm. And there's a big old paw prints in the concrete from back when they bought it. I used to coil up and sleep in them when I was little. You're still pretty little, fella. That's some kind of mouse crack, Larry. Huh? Uh, oh, oh, no. Just making conversation. Well, what's your slobbering tongue? You've been here for barely two minutes and already you've insulted my place. And me. If I didn't know better, I'd say you had an attitude problem. Hey, what happened to Chaps the St. Bernard? Moved out when rats moved in. You know, I never see dogs around here no more. Are you guys rabid? Rabid? Oh, heavens no. Well, we're the picture of health. We're from Dogtown. So, you guys are what? Escaped lab animals or something? Nope. They're not lab animals either. Ah, unwanted. Do we look like we'd be unwanted? Yeah, you do. What brings you dogs here? We're trying to find ourselves. Trying to find yourselves? You need a mirror or something? No, Mr. Sniffs. We're on a self-help mission. Trying to break ourselves of old bad habits and introduce some better ones in their place. Oh, I see. You're bad dogs. Bad dogs? No, 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 no. We're just... That's what happened to all the junkyard dogs that live here. Your friend Chaps, too. They were a band. Too noisy. Nobody wants bad dogs around. Wow. That stings like a newspaper to the nose. Welcome to life, buddy. What's your weakness? Too aggressive? Chew furniture? Bark nonstop? That last one. Uh, I got this bad separation anxiety, you see? And you? And I just like to bark. I uh, don't know why. Just being a dog, I reckon. <laughs> oh, I hate loud dogs. Not to mention if you flap your yapper out here, you'll only attract predators. As a mouse, I survive by being silent and stealthy. Screw up one time and it's curtains. Oh, yeah. Uh, I occasionally wee on the curtains. You do not. Only when I'm left alone too long. What's too long? Well, like five minutes. Pierre, I'm simply astounded by all the noise these dogs make. I don't see how anyone can heal themselves. Sink! Sacre bleu! That's the thing, Madame Lucille. I don't believe there's a lot of thinking going on here in Dogtown. Well, I certainly hope Larry Slobberstick and that Muggs fellow return with new attitudes. If this place remains as it is, I fear we'll be forced to impound every one of these hounds. What did you say? I thought our arrival might impart some peace and quiet. If only while we're here, I've never seen a community so indifferent to their bad image. What? I couldn't hear you. I said I thought our arrival might 
get him back some peace and quiet. What? Oh, never mind. Oh, this is where Macy the Mutt used to teach us pups how to bark the loudest. Did she ever teach you to bark quietly? No, the louder the better. Ah, oh, you think that's when I learned to be a bad boy? That could have been a start. Just what do you two mammals think you're doing on my turf? Your turf? Why can't we be here too? Because you're bad dogs. I can smell you a mile away. We don't want bad dogs around here, so you best... We're not bad dogs. Oh, yes, you are. I know you're kind. Just let me warn you two. Being a bad dog only leads to three outcomes. You lose your food, you lose your shelter, or you lose you. Remember that next time you want to act out. That's a lesson to be learned. True that. Well, well, we're awfully sorry to have disturbed you, Mr. Gator, but thanks for talking to us. We'll get going now. Get going? Don't you want to stick around for dinner? Mmm, dinner. <laughs> what are you having? Okay, off we go. What? Oh, but I wanted to hear what Gator's having for dinner. No, you don't. Come on, Muggs. I don't know, Larry. Uh, I think you're wrong about Gator. He seemed like a cool alligator. I don't think he was gonna eat us. Uh, uh, that's crazy talk. I wasn't about to stick around and find out, Muggs. Where are we? Meg the Mutt lived here once. She taught us pups how to chase after the bus. <laughs> oh, you think that was bad too? Who are you and what are you doing here? Huh? Who said that? It's just me. Who are you, mister? Well, Big Jeb's my name. Oh, hi. I'm Larry, and this is my best friend, Muggs. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, Big Jeb? Are you that elephant who escaped from the circus a while back? The one and only. Whoa. Uh. Congratulations, bloodhounds. You found me. The circus send you? Uh, nobody sent us, Big Jeb. We're not bloodhounds. We're just two dogs on a road trip. Trying to shed some old habits <laughs> and learn some new ones. Ah, bad dogs. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Everybody can see right through us, Muggs. In this world, there are two kinds of dogs. Bad dogs and good dogs. We're trying to change, Mr. Big Jeb. We really are. We've been bad. That's sort of why we're here. Were you dropped off? What? No, no, no. no. We just uh, barked so loud for so long that we got our whole town in trouble. So we struck out on our own to try and find out what it takes to be good dogs. An honorable gesture to be sure. Yeah? Yeah. You think so? I think so. We don't know if we're getting it right, Big Jeb, but we are learning lots about how other folks see us. Oh, that's your mistake. It is? Yep. You see, when I was at the circus, the way folks looked at me, I thought I was just a circus elephant. Once I got away, I realized I'm more than that. I discovered I can tap dance and bust out a rhyme, too. Whoa. So don't worry about what others think about you. It's about what you think about you. So I ask you again, are you a good dog or a bad dog? Hey, I'm a good dog. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Because, uh... Well, because now I know that everything that makes me a bad dog in everybody else's eyes, I learned it out here when I was just a pup. It's not really who I am. Looks like you learned your lesson, fella. How about you? I, I don't know who I am, Big Jeb, or why I am the way I am. Well, it's time you found out, ain't it? It is. I must go back home. The suburbs? 
Whoa! How do we get there, Big Jeb? The burbs. Well, you need to go see Groan the Lion. He has the resources and can show you boys the way. Wait, you mean the Groan, the theater actor? Whoa! He, he was in all the Wizard of Oz off-Broadway shows. Cause I'm a big bad lion, can't you hear me roar? From mountains to the treetops to the sandy shore. I climb trees and chase prey and snooze out in the sun. And if you want to pet my fluffy mane, then come and get you some. Excuse us, uh, Mr. Groan? That's right, dog. Uh, what you want? A picture? I don't do phones out here, so keep them gadgets in your pocket, you hear? Or oh, wherever it is, you keep them. Thanks, Groan, but we're not looking for a picture. We just... Autograph? Uh, yeah, I can do that. But just one. I ain't signing two, you know what I'm saying. I'll have to charge you for that. You both want one? Y'all can tear it down the middle. Hey, that's kind of cool. Groan the lion's autograph ripped in half. <laughs> like, raw, 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 raw. Dang, chill out. Don't be getting all spazzy. Huh? Oh, sorry. Who y'all want me to make it out to? Actually, um, we were just looking for directions. Directions? Where? Let me guess. Miss Sadie's. I swear, that dog gets all the tourists since she's moved out here. She's out here too? Wow! Who, who knew the old junkyard was such a hotbed of celebrities? Gotta go somewhere to get away from all that yapping, you hear? Clear your head. Get some peace and quiet up in there. They're building this place up. Putting condos up and stuff. Get some real estate while you can, guys. Wow! My old junkyard is gonna turn glitzy. Yeah, living well's the best revenge, dogs. We honor our environment and our homes out here. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. But, Grown, we're kind of turned around. Do you think we can get directions to the suburbs from here? The babs? Ugh. You all crazy? What you want to hit up the burbs for? Ain't nothing there but music and tofu. Yeah. You want to keep it real, you come to the junkyard. We understand, Groan, but we're touring the places we were born, and, well, Muggs here was raised in the junkyard over the hill, and... Oh, you OG, Muggs. Oh, thanks, G. No, not G. OG! I grew up in the suburbs. White picket fence and a big backyard, you know, all that jazz. Ah, house dog. Well, I mean, I've been out on my own for years. Now I call Dogtown home. Oh, Dogtown? Okay, okay, you keeping it real, dog. Yeah, see? I'm keeping it real. Oh, good. I've been real from day one. Just follow the road up that way. You'll pass a couple of factories. Then before you know it, you'll be on paved road. Back with all them softies. Thanks, Groan. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. It usually is, my dogs. It usually is. Junkyard condos, Lair. Can you imagine? That sounds too blingy for me, Muggs. I like to keep it real. Word. Let's go, dog. Our journey's not done. To the burbs we go. Wow. This is it, Muggs. The house I grew up in. I can hardly believe it. It still looks the same. Does it still smell the same? Well, mm, no. Some other dog's been marking in here. Smells like a few other dogs, if you ask me. Do you know who lives here now? No idea. But I wonder if all my old bones are still buried out back. I used to bury everything. Oh, boy. Oh, would you remember where you buried them? Would I? Every last one. Well, impressive. It's nice here.
Why did you ever leave this place, Larry? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. One day my owner left the gate open and I chased my ball out of the yard and down the street. After wandering around for a while, I found Dogtown. It was the best place in the world. I made friends, chased balls. Ah, it was home. It's pretty comfortable here, Larry. What would you do if you lived here again? Relax. That sounds good to me. Why would we jump off the walls barking and going crazy when we could relax and take it easy? I know, right? Look, that's the same sofa I slept on. No way. Way. And look at how the light falls through the front window. That's the same sun patch I used to snooze in. Oh, it is so cozy. Oh, boy. I'm tempted to take a nap right now. Not if I beat you to it, buddy. Are you saying you're faster than me, Larry? I sure am, Muggs. That sounds like a challenge. Take it any way you want. Wowza! Look at this dining room! Imagine all the meals we could have in here! Entrees and side dishes and, and seconds galore! I've been there, Muggs. I don't have to imagine. Trust me, it's as amazing as it looks. Larry, uh, are you thinking about not going back to Dogtown? I don't know. This is a nice walk down memory lane and all, but uh, somebody else lives here now. Uh, this this isn't my life anymore. I know, but uh, do you miss it? Hmm. Oh, wow! Look at that kitchen! Hold up, buddy. That's my kitchen! Oh, what a kitchen, Larry! What aromas! Oh, uh, what magic must be cooked and baked and simmered and stewed. <laughs> oh, you have no idea, Muggs. The tastes, <laughs> the flavors, mm, the recipes. Imaginings as close as you'll get, road dogs. Whoops. Uh, uh, hi. Hi yourself, Stray. Wait a minute. Stray? We aren't strays. We're from Dogtown. Howling and barking it up. Shh. We're good dogs, Lair. Uh, good dogs. Oh, <laughs> right. We're good dogs. Lounging and curling up. Ha. Let me guess. You have a leash and collar you want to sell us too. No. No, not at all. We don't uh, wear collars. Aha. You don't wear collars because you're strays. Street dogs. Bums. Urchins. Ne'er-do-wells. Ne'er-do-what? Oh, what is that? They're dim-witted, too. You can say that again. They're dim-witted, too. Uh, I, I feel dizzy, Larry. Stay strong, Muggs. These suburbanites can't stop us. We're straight out of Dogtown. Well, I'm Mr. Spots, and I live here. And I'm Mrs. Wags, and I live here too. And if you two are good dogs, why don't you wear collars? We don't wear collars because we're free. Yeah, we're free dogs from Dogtown. There's no such thing as a free dog. There's house pets. And street mutts. You're wrong. There's a place called Dogtown where dogs live free. Really? Yeah! If that's the case, why are you two here? That's because um, we might lose our freedom if we don't learn to be good dogs. What are you doing that's so bad? Well, we bark a lot. But that's uncivilized. City dogs don't bark. City dogs don't bark? Nope. They don't howl? No way. They don't mark? They don't snarl? Goodness, no. Why would we? Who wants to live like wolves? Not me. When you live in a town, you act like a good dog. It's the rule. Yeah, this is not the woods. 
or a junkyard. Hey! If you've really come from a town, you should know all this. Well, maybe our town dogs never learn what it's like to be civilized. We're just a motley mutt crew from all over this whole wide world who found a place that accepted us the way we are. Until our neighbors complained we're bad dogs. All dogs can be good dogs with some training. Yeah, it's not that hard. First thing you do is break your bad habits. Where did you learn to be a bad dog? Here. You used to live here? Yes! Are those your bones buried in the backyard? Yes! Who taught you how to bury bones? That's the worst dirt job I've ever seen. Aw, shucks. What else did you learn when you were here? Well, uh, I got real nervous when I was left alone, and, and I barked and barked and barked to, to calm myself down. Did it work? Well, no. So why did you keep doing it? I was a puppy. I didn't know any better. I didn't have anybody teach me otherwise. Ah, no puppy training. And that's, uh, bad? Very bad. Oh. But it's not your fault. You were just a puppy. How would you know? I wouldn't. But now you're an adult dog. And you can change your ways. It's all up to you. There comes a time in every dog's life when they've got to ask themselves, am I a good dog or a bad dog? So, which are you, Larry? What a trip. I don't even know what to say right now, Muggs. Same here, Larry. I'm feeling all the feels. I don't know about you, good buddy, but I see the error of our ways. Do you think Dogtown will feel the same way? I don't know, Muggs, but we're about to find out. What's going on, Buster? Who are you calling Buster, mister? Either one of you. From the looks of you, I figure there's a 50-50 chance that one of you's named Buster. So which is it? Neither. I'm Larry, and he's Muggs. Well, darn. Can't win them all, I guess. I'm Buck. What are you doing out here, Buck? I thought they chased out all the junkyard dogs so they could build condos. I'm a holdout. The last dog standing. I'm all alone, but I got nowhere to go. So I'll stick around. It's lonely out here for a junkyard dog sometimes. You ever hear of Dogtown? Dogtown? Oh, of course I have. I don't know how to get there. Otherwise, I'd have moved there a long time ago. Do you think they'd take you? Do I think? <laughs> Words out, bud. Dogtown accepts any canine with the dew claws to show up. That's true, but you have to behave. Dogtown doesn't just put up with any bad dog. I'm not a bad dog, guys. I'm one of the best boys you'll find anywhere. I'm a junkyard dog. We're tough, but we're good to the bone. It's true. Junkyard dogs are good dogs with a bad rap. I know it. My best friend is a junkyard dog. Oh, uh, thanks, Lair. Say, you guys know directions to Dogtown? Well, <laughs> here we are, Muggs. <laughs> oh, Dogtown never smelled so good. Shh. Listen to that. Listen to what? That, that silence. Wow, you're right. Nobody's barking. You know, for a minute there, I really thought we might never see this place again. I knew we would, Larry. What would a place like Dogtown do without its coolest dynamic dog duo? You're right. Dogtown needs us. Do you think they'll welcome us home? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Hello? Where is everybody? Tony! Hey, buddy! Larry, Muggs, you're back! Of course we are! 
Uh, did you think you could get rid of us that easy? Not at all. But none of us knew how long it would take you to, you know. To become good dogs? Oh, you guys have always been good to me, you know that? Thanks, Tony. Uh, the problem was we weren't being good to anyone else. Right, but uh, we've learned a thing or two since you last saw us. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, we couldn't help but notice no one came to greet us when we walked in. How's it been around here? It's been calm. Everyone's relaxed. There haven't been any complaints. Mr. Coolot's becoming quite the frisbee thrower. But I don't think that cat's very amused. Bernie even got a delivery of chewy bones from the other town as a thank you for keeping the noise down. Well, ew. now I really feel bad. The problem was us all along. Hey, we all had a paw in behaving badly, Muggs. I don't think anyone ever thought it was one dog's doing. No, but we know better. If I'd been cooler between the ears sometimes and didn't get the others whipped up into such a frenzy, Dogtown never would have found itself in trouble in the first place. Listen, Larry, what's done is done. The important thing is, you guys are back and everything's under control. Squirrel! Arr, 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 arr. There goes the town. Can't cure them all, I guess. I wonder if they'll blame that on us. I think the squirrel's to blame on this one, Larry. I think you're right. Come on, let's find Coolot and Hissy Fit. We have some apologizing to do. What do you say, Lucille? Are you up for a game of Frisbee? I think these dogs are getting to you, Pierre. You never cared about Frisbee before. No, but what a wonderfully fun pastime. Do you know that the Frisbee's history is immeasurable? People have been tossing disc-shaped objects around practically since the beginning of time. Oh, fascinating. Isn't it? You should go throw one right now. Yeah? You want to? No, just you. And chase it, then throw it again and repeat. Ah, ha ha ha. That's why I like you, Lucille. You're one funny cat. Supervisor. Cat supervisor. <coughs> Ahem, <clears throat> yes, right. Well, look who's returned. Our last pair of troublemakers. That's us. We're glad you guys are still here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we wanted to talk to you. And apologize for giving Dogtown such a bad name. And making you guys come all this way just to give us dogs one more chance. Oh, well... Apology accepted. Let me tell you boys something. Your town is incredibly fun, and it's a joy to see so many dogs living such quality lives, surrounded by friends and loved ones, without a want or need in the world. Pierre pours it on a little sick. Like gravy? Mm -hmm. Gravy! To be honest, I wasn't exactly thrilled at the prospect of traveling thousands of miles to a place called Dogtown, but your community has been a pleasant surprise. Oh, yeah? Yes, your food is decidedly super, and the shedding problem is utterly unmanageable, but your species has shown a willingness and propensity to learn beyond anything we'd expected. We're pretty doggone smart, right? And you're great frisbee players. Pierre speaking for himself, of course. I'm far too aloof to engage in tomfoolery like frisbee. Mais, je ne suis pas. English Pierre, English. Ah. Sorry. Listen, we appreciate getting the chance to learn and having the opportunity to become better dogs all on our own. Yeah, and we love what you've done with the place. I've never seen Dogtown so calm and quiet. Well, good behavior is what we at Ecole du Chien pride ourselves on. We are the most prestigious school in all of France. It shows. And we'll do our dead level best to make you guys proud of your involvement with Dogtown. Yeah, we're going to turn our bad reputation around. Good. Now, how about we go to the park for a nice game of Frisbee? Squirrel! Tony can play Frisbee like nobody's business. You ought to catch him. He'll play all day. Oh, yeah? Tony, wait up. How about a game of Frisbee? You know, if he keeps finding new Frisbee partners, you dogs might end up with a new neighbor here.
As uh, long as he keeps it down. We have a noise ordinance here in Dogtown. <laughs> Larry! Mugs! You're back so soon! It didn't take us long to learn what we've been doing wrong, Bernie. Yeah, well, we're smart dogs. <laughs> we're just not always good dogs. Nonsense! You're two of the best residents we have here. Nobody's perfect, but if we can learn from our mistakes, we become the best we can be. I want to thank you for giving us the chance to turn things around, Bernie. It, it probably would have been easier to single out a couple of troublemakers and let animal control take them away as uh, an example to the others. But you were there for us and let us know what the problem was. And how you thought we could fix it. We're grateful, Bernie. Boys, I couldn't be any prouder than I am right now. You've shown us all how loyal, intelligent, adaptable, and downright special dogs are. <laughs> and now the folks at E. Cole to Shane know that there's an awesome dog community of well-behaved boys and girls right across the pond. Huh, take that, prestigious dog school. <laughs> well, how did you two enjoy life on the road? It was an eye-opener, to say the least. A lot of animals out there really need a safe place to call home. It made us realize how lucky we are to live here. Yeah, it's safe to say we've returned with a whole new appreciation for Dogtown. We love our Dogtown with all our hearts. And we'll never put it in jeopardy ever, ever again. I'm very happy to hear that, you two. And on that note, this is the perfect time to introduce you to our newest resident. Boys, say hello to your new neighbor, Luther Bones. <laughs> Hey, Bernie, maybe you could clear something up for us. Is there room for one more dog in Dogtown? Well, we certainly have room for one more canine, if he behaves, of course. Phew, <laughs> that's great, because we met a new friend on our travels and thought we'd invite him back with us. Oh, oh what new friend? This one. <whistles> Come on in, Buck. Wow, nice place you have here. Can't wait to be part of your canine community, pals. You're welcome, Buck. Oh, guys, aren't you good boys? We are good boys. <laughs> yeah, we are good boys. <laughs> Boys, uh, hey, uh, hey, come on, boys. Uh, it's kind of loud. We're, uh, we're going to get in trouble again. It's too loud. Uh, it's too... Uh, oh, got it. Uh, oh, my goodness. Listen to that. Should we go back? Are you just going to play frisbee? Once things are back under control, yes. Then no. Come on, we're going straight to the airport. I need a cat nap. But the parking. We send the authorities. Our job here is done. I thought we had succeeded in silencing those dogs, but it looks as if we failed. Let's go, Pierre. S'il vous plaît. Un jeu de plus. Now, yeah. But I left my frisbee. Allons-y. Okay, okay. Oh, no. We're in trouble again. Allow me. <coughs> Shut your muzzles, gang. This town's gonna be quiet from now on. You hear? Hey, uh, how did you do that? Ha, well, that's how we keep the law down at the junkyard. 
When your neighbors are lions and alligators, you gotta act tough. <laughs> Whoa. Sometimes a dog acting bad can make other bad dogs good. You know it. Now, I'm gonna pee on some trees and make myself at home if you don't mind, gang. Uh, my pee spot is your pee spot, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the barking. It stopped. Does it mean we are not calling the authorities? <sighs> we will leave this town alone. Looks like they can work their problems out by themselves. We don't need to give them any trouble. Does it mean we can go back and play frisbee? No, it does not. Let's go, Monsieur Culotte. But... I'll get you a frisbee at the airport. How's that? Ah, yes! <laughs> <laughs>